Dollar Tree videos have been done to death on YouTube. Am I right? But I thought you needed one more Dollar Tree video this holiday season because I came up with some really creative Christmas DIY ideas that you won't see anywhere else. They all turned out so cute and they were so inexpensive to make ranging from less than $2 to only $11 for the most expensive project. I really can't wait for you to see what I came up with. So let's get started. I was so excited when I saw this metal deer in the Dollar Tree Plus aisle, and I immediately knew what I wanted to do with it. I wasn't crazy about the antique gold finish, so I spray painted it matte black and set it aside for a while. Next, I painted a Dollar Tree oval metal bucket, one of those buckets that says flowers and garden on the side. First, I spray painted it with some dark green paint that I had, but I didn't like the glossy finish. So I painted over it with some fern green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with sandpaper and brushed on a coat of antiquing wax, dabbing away the excess with an old rag. Next, I unscrewed the wood bases from two Dollar Tree bottle brush trees and painted the wood rounds with black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I drilled a hole in the center of both wood rounds and added a screw in each hole. Next, I drilled two small holes, one on each side of the back corners of the flower bucket, and then attached the wood rounds. I could have added four wood rounds, but to make the bucket look more like a cart than a wagon, I found a little piece of wood in my stash that I attached to the front end of the bucket with a screw and a little hot glue. I painted it black to match the wheels. I thought the cart was looking a little plain, so I decided to add some holiday IOD rub-on transfers. I wasn't sure if they would stick since I had already applied wax to the bucket, but luckily they stuck pretty cleanly. It just took a lot longer to get the transfer to release from its paper. There were a few imperfections, but I just went over the transfer with some sandpaper to lightly distress it, and that disguised all the imperfections. Then I applied a little antiquing wax over the top. Next, I wanted to add some embellishments to the Dollar Tree reindeer. I began by cutting a few thin strips from a piece of Dollar Tree faux leather. Then I wrapped one strip of the leather around the reindeer's body and another strip around its neck, just hot gluing the ends together. Then I added another strip on each side to connect the two loops together. I wanted to add gold jingle bells to the straps, but the only small gold jingle bells I could find in my stash were attached to some brown paper covered wire. So I just cut off the bells with my wire snips and hot glued them to the faux leather straps. I decided to go ahead and use the leftover brown wire to create the reins. I wrapped one piece of wire around the reindeer's muzzle and then hot glued a small piece of the faux leather over the wire. I drilled two small holes in the front of the flower cart and ran the ends of wire through the holes and twisted them together to hold them in place. To fill the cart, I removed the wood bases from four Dollar Tree bristle brush trees, and to give them a more realistic appearance, I drilled a small hole in the center of a short stick, added a drop of hot glue, and pushed the tree wire into the hole. 
I placed a few pine cones in the bottom of the card and stacked the four trees on top. For this project, I printed out some vintage Christmas card images with birds on cardstock to fit these wood round ornaments. I purchased mine at Walmart for 98 cents each, but Dollar Tree sells similar wood ornaments. I cut out the images to fit the ornaments and adhered them using spray adhesive. Then I went over the edges with sandpaper to remove any extra paper and to create a finished edge. I brushed white glue over the sides and along the front edges and then dipped the edges into some faux snow. I was having some camera issues during this project, but I did seal both the snow and the paper with a top coat of the spray Mod Podge. Then I hot glued a lace ribbon bow to the top of each ornament. To turn the ornaments into wall decor, I grabbed an old drawer front and painted it with some ivory chalk paint. Next, I painted a thrift store birdhouse with some moss green chalk paint. At this point, my camera clicked off again while I was hot gluing the birdhouse and ornaments to the drawer front. However, you could use a little twine and hang the ornaments from the birdhouse if you prefer. Then I attached a sawtooth hanger to the back side. I added a little bit of greenery to the hole in the front of the birdhouse. And then I found this little bird in my stash, which was the perfect size, but it was missing its beak. So I shaped a new one using super glue. When the glue was dry, I painted the beak black, and then I hot glued the bird to the bird perch and hot glued a small bit of greenery in his beak. For $1.25, I think the Dollar Tree ceramic bells are a really good deal. To turn them into Christmas decor, I first untied the twine to remove the clackers. Then I added some Dollar Tree sticky beaded trim around the top and bottom edges of one bell, and I hot glued some metal ribbon around the bottom edges of two other bells. Next, I mix some salt wash with some chalk paint to create a thicker paint to add some texture to the bells. I used salt wash because it was handy, but baking soda or plaster of Paris work really well too. I wanted to make each bell unique, so I painted one bell green, one white, and one red. I ended up applying two coats to each bell, and when the paint was dry, I sanded over the bells with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I applied wax to seal the paint on each bell. Wax not only helps to prevent scratches and chips in the paint, but it also adds depth and sheen to chalk paint. For variety, I applied clear wax to the white bell, antiquing wax to the red bell, and white wax to the green bell, dapping away the excess wax with a paper towel. Before adding any embellishments, I reattached the clackers so that I didn't accidentally cover up the holes. For the white bell, I added a miniature red metal house ornament from Walmart, a bottle brush tree, and a miniature snowman ornament from Hobby Lobby. 
then I hot glued on a few styrofoam snowballs and pushed a little piece of pillow stuffing into the chimney. For the green bell, I added a bottle brush tree, some tiny pine cones from my yard, and a miniature deer ornament from Hobby Lobby. Then I sprayed the top of the bell with adhesive and sprinkled on some fake snow. I also sprayed the top of the tree and dabbed it in the fake snow. I decided to keep the red bell simple and I just hot glued some Walmart greenery around the top and then added a few small pine cones in the center. At the outset of this project, I hadn't planned on adding anything to the sides of the bell, but I changed my mind and decided to apply some typography from leftover IOD transfers. This would have been easier if I had done this before applying the wax, but with a little effort, I was able to get them all to stick. Christmas is fast approaching, and I don't know about you, but at this time of the year, the panic of what to give as gifts starts setting in. But this year, I have several gifts ordered already from one of my favorite websites, Nuts.com. Nuts.com has an amazing selection of delicious sweet and savory snacks and a variety of beautiful holiday gift sets. In fact, you might want to order the hot chocolate bombs or the gingerbread kit for yourself. My family loves the nuts. Freshly roasted cashews, almonds, pistachios, and my personal favorite, the bourbon pecans. I could seriously eat this whole bag. They are so good. Mm. And quality is a top priority at nuts.com. They actually roast and ship their nuts on the same day. We also love their selection of classic candies like saltwater taffy, licorice, rock candy, and butterscotch. So if you need some gift ideas, I recommend you check out nuts.com. And right now, if you use my link, nuts.com slash Canterbury, you'll get a free gift with your order and free shipping on orders $29 or more. So don't panic. Go to nuts.com. I promise you won't be disappointed. Okay, seriously. Somebody stop me before I eat this whole bag. When I go to Hobby Lobby, I like to check out the dollhouse accessories for crafting embellishments. I recently bought these little wood windows for $3 each. I thought they would look super cute attached to Dollar Tree house-shaped signs. One of the Dollar Tree houses had a small plaque and was covered with gingham fabric. And so I pried off the plaque and pulled off the fabric and then sanded the surface smooth. For variety, I used the back side of another house shape. I chose some coordinating pieces of scrapbook paper, cut them to cover the front of the house shapes, and adhered them with spray adhesive. And then I trimmed off any excess paper by going around the edges with a utility knife. Then I printed out some vintage Christmas card images sized to fit inside the windows. I cut them to fit exactly behind each window and used glue stick to adhere them to the center of the house signs. Then I hot glued the window frame over them. 
I had some miniature white wreaths that I wanted to use. So I pulled off their red bows and hot glued the wreaths to the house signs. And then I made coordinating blue ribbon bows to add to the wreaths. I had a small wood Dollar Tree lantern and wanted to try to use the front crisscross panel as a window. So I carefully hammered the lantern to take it apart. Unfortunately, I did break the crisscross section in the process, but I decided to use it anyway. I did my best to put it back together using super glue and hot glue. It was not a perfect job, but once the super glue was dry, I sanded it smooth and painted over the crisscross frame with some light brown chalk paint. This next project is for all the kids or adults who love dinosaurs. I found this plastic T-Rex in the toy aisle at Dollar Tree, and I found these small gingerbread men ornaments at Hobby Lobby in the miniature ornament section. I removed the hanger from a clear plastic Dollar Tree ornament and tied the string of one of the gingerbread men through the hole. I added some faux snow into the ball ornament and then pushed the gingerbread man inside. I hot glued some red rickrack around the ornament hanger and glued on one of the tiny bows that I had previously removed from the miniature white wreaths. Then, to attach the ball to the dinosaur, I hot glued the dinosaur arms to the ornament hanger and hot glued the dinosaur legs to the ball itself. And since this was a really hungry dinosaur, I hot glued another gingerbread man into its mouth. To create a hanger, I drilled a tiny hole in the center of the dinosaur's back added a drop of E6000 glue, and screwed in a small eye hook. I sure wish I had thought of this idea when my nephew, Jasper, was still in his dinosaur stage. When I saw these tiny mittens at Dollar Tree, I thought they would make adorable Christmas decor. You could use these four mittens individually, but I decided to use them in sets. For the first pair, I hot glued some tiny pom-pom trim around the top edge of each mitten. Then I arranged and hot glued the mittens together. Make sure that you don't hot glue the mitten opening shut. I liked the contrast of white on the gray mittens, so I decided to add all white embellishments. I started with a white lace bow and then cut one single snowflake from a roll of snowflake ribbon and hot glued that over the bow. Then I hot glued on a few silver jingle bells. I cut apart a Dollar Tree greenery stem and put a few pieces in the back mitten and added some white pip berries. To create a hanger, I hot glued the ends of a Chanel stem on either side on the inside of the back mitten. After decorating the blue mittens with Dollar Tree lace ribbon and white bottle brush trees, I applied spray adhesive to the embellishments on both mittens and sprinkled on some faux snow. I also applied adhesive along the bottom edge of the mittens and dabbed them into the excess snow that had fallen on my crafting table.
I had another Dollar Tree reindeer idea, this time using the glittery plastic one. I drilled a large hole in the reindeer's back using a spade drill bit. And then I filled the hole with styrofoam and then began adding some Dollar Tree snowy pine stems. I also just grabbed some additional stems from my stash and pushed those into the styrofoam. I had purchased a small bag of sparkly antlers at Dollar Tree, so I added a few of those, pushing them into the styrofoam and then adding a bit of hot glue to hold them in place. Since the reindeer was glittery, I decided to add even more glitter in the center of the greenery, using some spray adhesive to hold it in place. I was getting ready to add a bow to the reindeer, and then I remembered a viewer who recently commented that she'd like to see a project where I did not add a bow or a bird. And I was thinking about that comment, and I thought, no, not a bow, a bird. A bird would be even better. So I sprayed a bird from my stash with adhesive, sprinkled on iridescent glitter, and hot glued him to the greenery. If you don't like birds, then skip this final step. I think the Dollar Tree snowflake ornaments are pretty on their own, but I also think that with a few embellishments, we can make them really special. For the first snowflake, I drilled a hole in the center to hold a flower from my stash and used a bit of hot glue on the back side to hold it in place. Then I hot glued some Dollar Tree greenery, sparkly styrofoam balls, and little pine cones from my yard around the pink flower. I know some of you don't like glitter, but since the snowflake is already glittery, I felt I had to spray the florals with adhesive and add even more iridescent glitter. Then I attached a velvet bow below the flower. And I decided the flower needed even more sparkle, so I sprinkled on some iridescent tube confetti. To do something different on the next snowflake, I found a vintage Christmas card image with a cute girl and printed it out on a piece of cardstock. I cut around the girl and applied some Dollar Tree double stick foam tape to the back to adhere her to the snowflake. The foam tape adds a bit of a dimensional effect, which I really like. I pushed a greenery stem through a hole in the snowflake and hot glued it on the back side. Then I glued on a few red berries to the greenery and sprinkled on some fake snow and added a tiny red bow. I also glued some tiny styrofoam snowballs in a few spots. Because I love vintage images, I think I like this snowflake better than the first. But what do you think? I'd love to know which of today's projects was your favorite. And if you'd like to purchase one, they are for sale along with a number of other home decor items on my website, canterburycottageshop.com. And don't forget to check out nuts.com and use my link to receive a free gift and free shipping with any order of $29 or more. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope to see you back here next week.